This is a video of a continuation of our AXPAR 29 educational series. And in this video, we're gonna be really dialing in on the electrical system on the 29 AXPAR. So the first key component is turning all your batteries on. So with these switches on, I know that they're on right now too, because you can see how there's a red light on here. So all my batteries are on. It's giving me that positive indication that with the red light, okay, we're good to go. And obviously my screens are on as well. Everything on the boat runs off of electrical energy, right? 12 volt DC uh, electrical energy. There's DC electrical energy and AC electrical energy. And DC is basically batteries, 12 volts ish. And then AC is 110 shore power, right? For the first part of this video, we're just gonna focus on the DC battery supply voltages. One thing that's key is understanding what your battery voltage is. Um, and on the Simrad screen here, you've got a supply voltage and I always like to have this on the screen just because everything is running off of the DC energy and I wanna know that we have good voltage. 12.3 right now is perfectly adequate. What I'll do right now, just so you can see, the batteries are do get charged by the engines. So if I were to turn the engines on right now, in a second here, what you're gonna see is the supply voltage is you know jumped up to 13.6 or so, which is a good charging voltage. Anything over roughly 12.8 volts is gonna be a form of a charging voltage on board the boat. The engines right now are charging the service batteries. So, you know, you want to, when your engines are running, the expectation is that your batteries are in that 13 range. 13, and they can even get up to 14 uh, for charging. I always like to pay attention to that because if the engines are on and the supply voltage is at 12.3, 12.4, whatever it may be, that's not right. So that's why I always like to have this piece of information readily at my fingertips. Now, another thing that um, is good to be aware of, you have two 100 amp hour house batteries. And those two batteries supply most of the energy to all the systems on board the boat. Though if the house batteries are not charging or helping to support are your engines, your bow thruster, and your anchor windlass. And that's why you have separate batteries for those. So you have a dedicated battery for your anchor windlass and bow thruster. And then you have a dedicated batteries once for each engine. You, sometimes you have single engine, you'll have one extra battery. Sometimes you have two engines. That means you'll have two more batteries. If for some reason you were to absolutely kill and draw down your house battery bank, you can still start your engines. So no need to worry about that but you have 200 amp hours worth of um, batteries for your house, which is twice what the Axopar 28 had. So you've got a lot of energy to work with there. One place where you can check your supply voltage for your mercury system is you can just check it right here. Where the engine's on, you can see we're at 14.3, 14.6. Um, if I were to shut the engines off, which I'll do right now, um, you'll see that number start to drop down, they're no longer being charged, and that voltage is just gonna slowly start to drop. Another way you can charge the batteries is through the battery charger, which is located aft uh, underneath the aft cabin. But let's go through the process on plugging into shore power so you can charge up your, your house battery bank. And it also charges your bath thruster battery and your engine start batteries. So the battery charger will, will charge all those systems at the same time. So let's go through that process. When you're not using the boat, even when all the battery switches are off, there are still drains on the house battery bank. So if you're gone for a period of time, you may come back to the batteries being drained even when everything is off. And that is because of all the natural parasitic loads that these modern boats have these days with carbon monoxide detectors, memories from Simrad, memories for the stereo, all these little things that kind of slowly eat away at the service battery bank. So it's important to plug the boat in while you're not using the boat. Now, if you don't keep your axe part on a dock and you can't plug in, the solution that we have is putting a solar panel up on the hardtop, and that does a wonderful job just making sure your batteries are being charged up while you're not on board. Going back to the process for plugging your boat in, first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that these, these switches are off for when you're plugging the uh, cord into the boat. 
So they're off right now. So that means that there is no electrical energy going through this cord right now. Another way I can tell that is there's this little red light. So this is the shore power cord that comes from Axopar. And it's really great shore power cord because it has this light indicator. You might be able to see on the screen here, you have that little red light there. So that tells me that there's power to this end. But I don't want to be carrying a cord with 30 amps of power on it, particularly if I were to accidentally fall in the water or anything like that. So you always want to be handling a dead cord. I really love it how just the easy access that Axpar has for getting to this shore power inlet. It's also out of the way of the out of the elements too. There's a little L uh, plug here, so I always might line up the L with the L on the plug. So you insert it right in here, just like this. Give it a little twist, and then it's best practice to secure that in tight. Now that we're plugged in, you can see how there's also a little notch in the fiberglass here. That is so you can close this, which is pretty sweet. But now let's go back to that switch and turn it back on. Turning on the power switch here, I now know that there's power going through the cord, power going into the boat, but there's a couple more steps needed. So there's another uh, sort of visual indicator. You have this red visual indicator that there's power going into the cord. You now need to make sure that there's power going into the boat. So there's these two switches. You need to turn on the main breaker. So when I turn on this main breaker, see how there's this green light? That is a good green light. Uh, that is telling me that there's power going into the panel, into the battery charger and the outlets, okay? And these switches are on, on the on position, they're up. It is important to pay attention to make sure that these battery chargers are on because if your battery charger was off, you would still see this green light, but your battery charger is not getting power. So it is important to make sure that, that that these switches are up, which is the on position. And the final step that I like to do is the final confirmation, making sure that the battery charger is working. And where I like to confirm that is on the screens. So let's go back to the pilot house. We're at 13, 14 voltage right now on the supply voltage. That's telling me, yes, we're getting power on the batteries. They're getting charged right now. So we're good to go. We can now shut the boat down and hop off because I know the battery charger is working. I hope you found this video helpful talking about the electrical systems on the 29 Axapar. If you have any questions for us, please do feel free to reach out using the information below this video.